So in this video, I'm gonna go through two of the four core studies in the developmental approach. Um, these are gonna be Bandura and Cheney. Now, the reason I'm not going through Kohlberg and Lee as well in this video is because I find they're easier to compare to one another because of the um, moral development theme within them both. However, in the spec for the OCR Psychology A-Level Paper 2, um, you need to know how the two studies are similar and how the two studies are different. Um, you also need to know what extent the contemporary study changes our understanding of the key theme and to what extent the contemporary study, which in this case is Cheney, changes our understanding of individual, social and cultural diversity. Now, in this video, I'm not going to touch on that as much because it's more about comparing and contrasting, which sometimes I find quite difficult and I know some other people find quite difficult. Now, I'm going to start with Cheney. Um, this is the contemporary study and it is all about compliance. So medical compliance, which is kind of the background of this study um, because low rates of compliance are a current issue. Well, were a current issue when this study was taking place in the healthcare system. So young children struggle to comply with instructions to take asthma medication. And asthma medication is the what is being tested here and whether you can improve the compliance due to a reward system. And this is operant conditioning, which is an approach that's being used to improve compliance in the medical industry. Um, the aim of the study was whether use of the fun haler with positive reinforcement improves medical compliance in young asthmatics. So this sum the sample of this study was young children. Um, they were 32 children, 22 male and 10 female. Now we can see that there's a bit of gender bias there because there's about half the amount of females as there are to males. So when evaluating the study, you might say that females might be more reactive in a certain way than males. So if we're using more males, then it's not very representative of the target population. Their mean age was 3.2 years and they were a random sample of asthmatics recru recruited from clinics across a large geographical area. Now that large geographical area means that it is, it's not ethnocentric because if they're from a wide area, then they're not just limited to one area and one particular type of sample. The design was a self-report um, with a structured questionnaire and closed questions. Now, in my research methods paper that I've just sat, one of the multiple choice questions was what type of um, questions were used in Cheney's self-report. And I put semantic differential rating scale because it's something that in the textbook it isn't really shown. It's like one sentence, but it was closed questions. Um, the procedure took place in participants homes over two weeks and obviously informed consent was given by their parents or a responsible adult and questions on child's attitudes towards medication and compliance levels were asked. Then the fun haler was used instead of the regular PMDI um, asthma medication like the inhaler um, the fun haler consisted of whistles, spinning discs, things that distract children from the drug delivery events. So that rewards them whilst they're inhaling this medication because it's self-reinforcement. After this, participants did a matched item questionnaire on the fun haler. So there was a random check on the telephone for the use of the fun haler on the previous day. Um, but they were asked about how their children responded to the fun haler, whether they were more compliant with it, whether they were less stressed when taking the medication. And the results showed that the use of the fun haler improved medical compliance. So problems with taking medication such as screaming, refusing to breathe were significantly lower for the fun haler. So because they were getting this reward from taking the medication, this kind of distracted them from the negative aspects of inhaling that medication. The 68% pleasure with the fun haler was compared to a 10% who enjoyed just the standard device. So there's a really significant difference between how much people enjoy taking their medication if there's a reward attached to it. 
So the conclusions that Cheney made were that the fund inhaler improves clinical outcomes, such as lowering rates of admissions to hospital after an asthma attack. So it's got really good practical applications for children. And Cheney actually wanted to sell this product to clinics, I believe. So this was actually considered as a pilot study because they were testing the attitude of the fund inhaler before it was used for further use. So... The whole idea that concludes from this is that self-reinforcement can improve overall health of children. So I'm going to move straight on to Bandura. Um, this is our classic study and I'm going to try and compare it with Cheney as we go along. So this video isn't really, really long and you can see the comparisons within the procedure and the design of the study itself. Um, the background of this study was all about the tendency of children to imitate adult social behaviour. So, for example, if a young boy sees his dad punch someone in the street, then he might think that he should do that as well because he's witnessed that from a role model. And this is called observational learning because they're observing the adult behaviour and possibly repeating it or imitating it. Um, previous studies have shown that children identify with adult models um, and they also show that there's gender specific behavior so aggression might be associated with masculinity um, and this is what Bandura kind of wanted to look at in one of his aims as well whether boys would imitate aggression more and whether same sex um, role models would increase levels of imitation so the kind of research question was will they imitate aggressive behavior when the role model is no longer present so after observing them once they've gone will they imitate this behavior and there were 72 participants so um more almost double or more than double than cheney's participants there are only 32 in cheney and 72 in uh, Bandura. In addition, there was 36 male and 36 female. So that's a really nice balance of gender. It's not gender bias like Cheney is. So that's a comparison or a contrast that you might make between the two. So you could say that Bandura is more representative than Cheney's sample. Uh, they were all selected from a nursery at Stanford University and their mean age was four years and four months. So a similar-ish age to those in Cheney studies. So they were both looking at children and children's behaviour um, in terms of uh, a reward system, you could say, and imitating a behaviour and learning a behaviour. So the design was a lab experiment. This is uh, different to the self-report. Um, you could compare them both by looking at the strengths and weaknesses. So you could say that a self-report might show um, social desirability and a lab experiment might show demand characteristics which are both quite similar however a lab experiment would have more control than a self-report because it's in controlled settings and it's not affected by extraneous variables um, the independent measure it was an independent measures design so participants only did one condition and the independent variable was aggression or non-aggression sex of model and the sex of children and they were also matched on their aggression levels so I believe a psychologist um, two psychologists observed them in their playground and kind of noted down their aggression levels in general and then they matched them on that um, you might have to check the textbook though because that's kind of based off memory and not notes uh, the procedure, so there was three different sections of the procedure. This one's a bit more complex than simply filling out a questionnaire over two weeks after using a fun inhaler. Um, however, the sample was kind of distributed really nice and evenly. So there was 12 boys and 12 girls in the first um, the first section of the procedure and these were in the aggressive condition so they either did remember independent measures design they either did aggression or non-aggression so in the aggression condition there were six boys and six girls with same sex adults showing aggression there was also a non-aggressive aggressive condition with 12 boys 12 girls six boys six girls with the same sex non-aggression the third one was actually a control. So there was 12 boys and 12 girls again. So that's really nice and easy to remember. However, there was no model present at all. 
So it was either an aggressive model, a non-aggressive model, or no model. Um, there was three separate rooms. So to start the study, they went into the modelling room. And this was a playroom, and they were invited to a game for 10 minutes. And in the first two conditions, there was an adult in the room, obviously, and this was their model. Um, the aggression, the aggressive condition towards a five foot Bobo doll um, was they were doing things like hitting it um, with a hammer, striding over it, saying verbal abuse such as sock him or kick, kick it or things like that. You might have to be more specific, which I'll pop in the title in this video section. Um, but the non-aggressive condition simply ignored it and had no interaction with it. Um, the second room was the aggression arousal. So children were moved into this next room with lots of attractive toys in there. So after two minutes of seeing these attractive toys, obviously playing with them if they wanted to, they were told they weren't allowed to play with them as they were the very best toys reserved for other children. So obviously, if you're a child and this happens to you and you're about four years old, you're going to get quite stroppy and you're going to get quite angry and aggressive, possibly. And that's the aggression arousal working in there. They wanted to get the children quite agitated. And then the third room was the delayed imitation test. So they were observed playing for 20 minutes. There was one observer in the room with paperwork and then there was two or more behind a one-way mirror. And what they did is they observed their behaviour um, with the Bobo doll and seeing how they um, reacted to it, how they interacted with it. And the results showed that um, children who had witnessed an aggressive model were significantly more aggressive themselves. And that's quite obvious, really. It's because if the previous studies show that, then it's likely that this result was going to come ahead. Um, there was very little difference between aggression in the control group and that in the non-aggressive modelling condition. So if there was... The non-aggressive was someone who ignored it, whereas the control was there was no model. So there wasn't much difference between those two groups. Uh, boys were significantly more likely to imitate aggressive male models. Uh, the difference for girls was much smaller. So that previous background information of gender-specific behaviour is supported there. Um, and finally, boys were significantly more physically aggressive than girls. Girls were more verbally aggressive than boys after observing a female model. So this is kind of the gender stereotypes coming into place here. And it shows that children observe their role models and then imitate their behaviour. So to conclude this video, I'm just going to go through the um, some of the comparing and contrasting points that I thought of when studying this and just how um, I might talk about them in the exam if I get a question on them. So sample size is a good one to pick up on with any study because it's easy to compare if you remember them and if they're different, it's great. Um, so Bandura had a lot larger sample size than Cheney, suggesting it is more representative of the target population. This actually means that Bandura might be more externally valid than Cheney. I won't go into that too much, but it's worth looking it up if you know your types of validity and reliability. Um, ethnocentrism. You could say that Bandura is more ethnocentric than uh, Cheney because all of its sample was from the Stanford nursery at the Stanford University. And that could actually link with the sample. So if you're comparing and contrasting the sample and saying that Bandura is more representative, you could then counter argue that with the fact that Cheney is more representative due to a larger geographical area and that's a really good way of linking the two together and making a really strong comparison point and an argument in whether it's a short or long answer question. Um, gender bias is another one obviously in Bandura's they're nice and evenly spread and in Cheney's there's a bit of a imbalance um, which again representativeness is a really big point in both of these studies I think. Um, now the debates, the nurture debate, you could say, obviously, developmental psychology, linking it back to the approach, both of them focus on nurture rather than nature and how children can learn behaviours due to imitation, rewarding systems, etc. 
So by bringing back the debate and then linking it back to the approach is a really good way of linking the two studies. And finally, psychology is a science. So we had a self-report in Cheney's and a lab experiment in Bandura. So the control of a lab experiment compared to a self-report might suggest that Bandura supports psychology as a science more than Cheney does.